Hello, my name is Carlos Casanova, IT Chronicles 10 in Tech at Knowledge17. Welcome. I'm here with Shane Carlson. Hello. Paul Gleason from Unisys. Hello. Thanks for uh, joining us Thank today. You. So, Paul, I know you know automation is it's a huge topic right now. I think a lot of people think that'll cure you know world hunger, gravity, everything. Um, but there's going to be really a lot more pragmatic approach to this. Um, and I know you know you do a lot of uh, preaching on this topic. Can you tell us basically what is it? You know why and you know how how we really kind of get this done. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting topic right now because I think everyone has an opinion on automation. Uh, but I don't think anyone really understands how to truly get the value out of automation that it brings to the organization. Um, one of the challenges I think a lot of organizations are facing right now with automation is that uh, they know that it's available, they know that it's getting stronger, uh, they know that it's some practical use cases coming to market right now, which is exciting, but they don't really know how to get the best return on investment and in integrating into their right. environment. Yeah, absolutely. So when, when you guys talk about automation, I, you know, there's a lot of uh, emphasis today on uh, on AI, machine learning, and things of that nature. Uh, when you talk about automation, you know, kind of what what tact are you taking on that, and how are you guys, you know, applying that practical approach to it in the market? So the way we're approaching this is kind of interesting. Um, we've actually got a little bit of IP we've developed around this methodology, and we actually lead with a consulting engagement because. Okay. Automation really comes down to, it's a personal journey for an organization. Absolutely. Uh, we see there's, there's three realms of automation. There's the corporate automation level, there's the public cloud, things like ServiceNow's level yep. of automation that they're bringing to the table, but also then there's the personal automation it's, it, that people bring the day-to-day -day with their series and their phones, etc. Sure. And so from a Unisys perspective, we like to work with our clients to understand how they should best approach adopting automation and right. integrating it from an end-to-end -end perspective into their business. Okay. So, so it's, <clears throat> I mean, are you finding that companies are scared of it? Are they just don't understand it? Because you know, some of you know, there's a lot of talk, but I just wonder if like are, are individuals or organizations worried about what it might do to their organization? I don't know if they're scared of it. I don't think they know where to start. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and one thing I will add too is when we talk to our clients about, organize, uh, about uh, automation, we always make sure that we, we wrap around an organizational change management approach okay. to this because it is a cultural change. And Absolutely. not all organizations uh, are willing to adopt automation to the same level as some other more progressive companies yeah. are. So we have to tailor that message, tailor that implementation of automation to the right level um, for, for the client's culture. If it's not culturally al aligned, it's not going to be a successful implementation. So are you seeing attitudes change towards uh, the amount of automation that people are willing to take on in the organization? Uh, is that shifting? You know, I know in the early days, you know, people focused a lot on event management, event correlation, things of that when they talked about automation. Um, as you start moving towards the, the automation space and ticketing and interactions with your end users and clients, what, you know, what are people's attitudes around that these days? So, so we like to view automation in terms of systems, and there are realms within the systems that we work with. And from a system of automation, you need to have a foundation to make it work. So when we come and talk to a client about how do we want to uh, consider automation, we take on the cultural sensitivities as I just talked about. Yeah. But then the second way, step in, the, in that process is that we then look at what actually is the opportunity inside their organization for automation. Not everything should be automated. Sure. Not everything yeah. could be automated <laughs> and not would you ever want to consider doing that. Correct. So we like to break things down into a should, could, would approach. Uh, you know, what should you be automating today? Because the technology is readily available. And that typically comes down to what we'd call a deterministic uh, yeah. incident, something that has a, the same resolution every time. That's predictable, it's, it is just a very easy candidate for implementing some sort of process automation, and we like to do that very quickly out of the back with our clients. Then you get to the more complex realms where you need to have things like event management, you need to have a, a correlation change, real-time monitoring yes. of your entire ecosystem, including your cloud partners. Sure. If you don't know what's going on in their partner <laughs> realm in real time, how do you automate to solve something that's yep. going on in those realms. Yep. So that's where you need to look at the investments that you're making and what the return is, because sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense to automate everything. Automation has a key role to play, but it's not gonna be for everything and solve all the problems. Yeah. To right. your point, it's not gonna be a cure for gravity. Right, right, yeah. you know, and it's funny, the, um, you know, I, see, I see some of these, uh, some organizations like, oh, we went to the cloud so we don't have to worry about it anymore. Yes. 
And you're like, I sit there and say, how, how do you, it's still your organization. If it goes bad, it's still yours. Exactly. Yeah, you're so still how, responsible for the outcomes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, how, uh, how, that's so true. I mean, we did some research last year. 27% uh, of uh, clients that we surveyed have more than 10 cloud providers mm -hmm. in their environment. Yeah. And you imagine how many of those 10 cloud providers have got event monitoring, change management that's integrated across the entire... Everyone. Week, every single... <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then that, that presents a level of difficulty for the clients to figure out, you know, what do I do with all this information I am getting back from the customer? Because it's not in the same format that I, you know, when I get something from ServiceNow, it may not be in the same format that I get from AWS or Azure. You know, so what are you guys doing from an automation point of view to kind of manage all of that across the cloud space for your clients? So what we're doing is we're, we're building some technology that we're leveraging with ServiceNow uh, and other platforms as well uh, to be basically a cloud management platform that we're taking to market. Yes. And we're using that technology um, to effectively uh, drive the decision trees for automating uh, the environments of our clients. So for example, if, if you have a mission critical app that's on a platform that doesn't have real-time event monitoring, you know, a change process that's in integrated across the entire ecosystem, you've got almost zero chance of successfully automating a resolution that involves that application. Yeah, right. So we make smart business decisions with the clients based on the cloud platforms that they're yeah, using. Absolutely. So what do you think the, the hardest thing you have to do walking into a client that hasn't had a lot of automation previously? You know, what's the, the hardest conversation you have to have to kind of move the needle with them? The hardest conversation, I would say, is going to be the cultural expectations misalignment. Yeah. So a yeah. lot of organizations, a lot of leaders, uh, they go to conferences, they hear the word automation mentioned at conferences, yes. they think, this is great, I want to accelerate my business, I want to move down this path. Uh, but then they don't understand fully the consequences and the complexities associated with automating their yes. entire end-to-end -end environment. Yes. And so it's it's we have a lot of conversations with IT leadership that is candidly out of line with the realities yes. of what's available yeah. today. So you don't want to be the harboring or bad news, but you want to be pragmatic about yeah, it. Sure. And that's what we like to do when we talk to our clients. We, we talk about a pragmatic, integrated automation approach, taking the islands of automation that exist today, be it intelligent learning, machine learning, cognitive yeah. agents, and integrating them into a cohesive story that is tailored for the success of your environment. If you don't treat it with that sort of level of sensitivity, uh, from the examples that we've seen in the marketplace of some of the early adopters, uh, the results aren't necessarily as good as they could be. Yeah. Now, do you find <clears throat> do you find that um, organizations still view it as oh automation reduced headcount? Do you, do you you know and not really the yeah. ultimate results yeah. which yeah. is supposed to be better business process better yeah. better what, results? When can I fire my service desk? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is yeah. this going to result so, in thirty percent so reduction? Uh, and exactly. Um, so so guess what? Automation comes at a cost. It's no, not free. I thought it was free. And that's the dirty <laughs> secret in automation. Uh, people expect by the, by the wave of a hand, I can do automation in my organization and I can take all my costs out yes. of my business. The reality is, is that for a lot of the business cases, you're introducing significant costs in the first 12, 24 months right. to get a return on investment. Yeah, and that is the startling realization that a lot of the IT leadership executives that I talk to don't necessarily understand. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the cost of automation, it's the cost to integrate that automation right. that is the hidden, hidden, yeah, hidden. The, yeah. There's of, an upfront cost to get the payoffs down the line abs, ultimately. As there is always in, in, in most strategic IT investment. And we see uh, automation has been nothing more than that, and nothing, yes, nothing different absolutely. than that. So, so how many, uh, in percentage wise, how many conversations usually end when you give them <laughs> the news? <laughs> um, interestingly, they, they don't stop there uh, because I think everyone realizes the, the value of automation and that is you get the repeatability. Absolutely. You get a better user experience. Yep. Uh, and and, and, yeah. and it's, it's, it's permeating into our day-to-day -day private lives already. Right. Uh, and you're going to see it become more and more prevalent yeah. in the organizations that, that you work in and today in the workforce. So you know, the, the, the personal automation realm, the public automation realm, with the private automation right. realms, those three are coming together uh, in, in a dramatic fashion. And it's, it's going to be start of, uh, standard business practices uh, going forward. It's how do companies transform into those practices yeah. Yes. is where the, trans, uh, the, 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 the challenge is right now. Yeah, cool. Well, hopefully you have uh, great success because I think all of us you know, know a lot of companies that uh, definitely need to, to move forward. So uh, wish you the best with that and thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us here today. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Joe.